Hello, my name is Rod Edmonds and I'm a member here at the Heart of Longmont. It's my pleasure today to share with you some thoughts about these times and what I found in the scriptures that might actually help us uh, navigate the world we find ourselves in. Today is Inauguration Day, the day when we swear into office a new president and vice president. I remember four years ago, what a stark contrast that year was to this year. Or was it really? In January 2017, nearly half the country was shell-shocked at the outcome of that election. There was real despair across our country, accusations of election fraud, and the election integrity compromised by other countries. The racial justice issues that were headlines in 2020, they were there, oftentimes hidden in footnotes and subtext. The, in, the impacts of income disparity, they were there also, as evidenced by unequal access to pay for performance, health care, education, and opportunity. I remember Joan and I having dinner with uh, a couple friends right after that inauguration. And one of them actually has uh, contacts in Washington, D.C. And she offered to get us into the 2021 inauguration festivities and celebratory galas. I remarked that I want to be there. January 20th, 2021, I want to be at the inauguration because I believe it is going to be a historic inauguration, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Little did I know then. These are certainly trying times, but you know what? This is not the first time we've had to deal with tough issues. All of us have had to deal with setbacks, loss, heartache, anger, frustration, granted some more than others. But as we hear in the scripture today, Jesus is an example of how to live in those moments with solitude and silence. Imagine what it must have been like for Jesus the crowds pressing him for miracles, the officials looking for ways to trip him up, provide them with anything upon which to take legal action. And his disciples, the chosen people, always looking for signs, asking him the same question over and over again, and even to the point of betraying him. How tough were those times, and how tough was his life? Yet we have so many examples in the Gospels of how he found peace and strength in spite of all of this. If we look at the scriptures, Mark in particular, and a little bit in Matthew and, and Luke, we'll start with Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. And in Mark chapter 1, verse 45, despite Jesus' plea that his miracles be kept secret, the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. If we look in Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, when Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been beheaded, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. I can only imagine what he prayed. In Mark 6, verse 46, after Jesus had dismissed the crowds, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was still there alone. 
Luke 11, verse 1. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Did the disciples see the power of prayer in Jesus and want it as well? And as we draw near his crucifixion, Mark tells us, they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. Chapter 14, verse 32. Continually, Jesus withdrew from people, daily life activities, and the demands of his ministry to be alone with the Father and pray. Jesus' solitude and silence is a major theme in the Gospels. His ongoing intimate relationship with his Father was the source of his compassion, his wisdom, and his power. The priority of Jesus' solitude and silence is everywhere. It's how he began his ministry. It's how he made important decisions. It's how he dealt with troubling emotions like grief. It's how he dealt with the constant demands of his ministry and cared for his soul. It's how he taught his disciples. It's how he prepared for important ministry events. It's how he prepared for his death on the cross. Jesus invites us to join him in his solitude so that we can know God also and share his love with others. Starting yesterday, the Heart of Longmont had a prayer vigil, and I hope you had a chance to sign up. If not, don't worry. It's never too late to enter into a time of solitude and silence, a time to commune with God, our Father. It's my hope today that you will be able to find time to experience the peace and healing power of prayer. Would you pray with me? Father, so much going on, so many emotions, so much stress. Yet I know there is also so much good in this world, so much love. I pray we don't let the emotions, the stress, overwhelm us and lead us to unhealthy outcomes, but that we will see in the good and experience in love the possibilities of a brighter tomorrow. Be with those who have pledged an oath to put us on a path of reconciliation and healing, for their job is challenging. They need our prayers and support to enable us to be the people you have called us to be. In your name I pray. Amen. May God bless you all, and I hope you have a great day and rest of your week.